dx dy instead of dy dx. And this one I'm not going to dot dot because I want you to actually see it happen. Any questions on how I switch this? There's a problem, there's a couple problems on your um, homework. I think there's two problems where it says switch the order of integration. So they give you this and they want you to switch it over. And I promise you a problem like that on the final. Promise. All right, so let's do this integration. The antiderivative of sine of y squared with respect to x is x sine of y squared, right? Evaluating this, x equals 0 to x equals y d y. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to replace x with y. So this is going to become y sine y squared. I'm going to replace x with 0 and we're just going to get 0. Right? So this, this will become move it up here. integral 0 to 1. What did I say it was going to be? y sine y squared d y. Now is that something you can integrate? Yes. yes. That y out front saves you, doesn't it? It's just a basic u sub. Basic u substitution. Take this to be u. What's the derivative of this? 2y. You've got it basically. So this becomes I'm not going to go through the integration. I'm just going to expect you can do it on your own, you know, on the side if you need to, whatever. This becomes 1 half, um, negative 1 half, cosine y squared. That's your antiderivative. Shall we check it real quick to make sure it is? What's the antiderivative of cosine of, of something? Negative sine? of that something. Then times the derivative of what's inside. What's the derivative of what's inside? 2y. So what's 2y times negative 1 half? It should be y. And then there was a negative that popped with the sign. So this, it works. OK, you go do it on your own. This. All right, and then I'm evaluating what? y is 0 to 1. Plug in 1, you get cosine of 1, don't you? So negative 1 half, cosine of 1, and then minus cosine of 0 is 1. So minus negative 1 half. So you're going to get negative, cosine, or negative 1 half cosine 1 plus a half, whatever that is. And just leave it. That's the exact answer. Outstanding. If you were going to try and figure out what cosine of 1 was on your calculator, you would be in radian mode, right? If you were in degree mode, you'd get the wrong answer. It's radians unless it's specified that it's degrees. OK, a couple of uh, properties of double integrals. We didn't really need this. I did, I did kind of a, like talk about this a little bit, but now I'll just formalize it. Um, in that problem that we had a minute ago, where, where it was this one, the tetrahedron problem, remember I asked, you know, do we want to do this type 1 or type 2? And we decided type 1 was the, the better approach, but that type 2 we could do it. But if we did type 2, we would have to break it into two pieces because the arrows this way would be different than the arrows this way, right? This right here tells you that you're allowed to do that, split it up. So if you have some region D that you split somehow into D1 and D2, then the double integral over the entire region D is equal to the sum of the two integrals over each of those regions. 
That's not something we can just assume is true. This tells us it is. And I believe that, no, that's not the last one. So this is a major result, um, and it's going to be even a bigger result when we get to triple integrals. Here's, here's what I'd like for you to, to try and visualize. Let's say that we have some object. I'm going to make it real simple to start off. Let's go with the rectangle. Remember when we had rectangles? Let's just say for the sake of demonstration, this was 1 and 3, and let's say this was 1 and 4. Yeah. And let's say I wanted to do some double integral of some surface over this, right? So I lay that down on the ground. I'll try and draw this a little different. Um, let's make this our x, our y, our z. So our rectangle would be laying on the ground like this, wouldn't it? That's our rectangle laying down. Let's say that the function on top was this function, f of x equals 1. That means that no matter what point I plug in, how high do I go up? One. So for every point I go up one, go up one, go up one, what I wind up doing is drawing this box, right? And evaluating that double integral, right? if this is one, then evaluating that double integral gives me the volume underneath that, right? What's the volume of this box? It would be... Well, how wide was it? It was too wide. How long was this? Three. And how tall? One. So it's two times three times one, which is six. So the volume of that box is six. Agreed? But because it was one unit high, isn't that also the area of this? The area of that's six, right? So the point is this. If you're ever trying to find the area of a weird object in two-dimensional space, you can find it by doing the double integral of the region and using 1 as f of x, y. If you do that, your answer will be the area of the region you're integrating over, always. So it's not a coincidence that the volume of this being 6 matched with the area of this being 6. They will always be the same as long as the function is 1. All right. Um, I'll show you a, uh, I'll show you an example. Uh, no, I don't know. No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. The reason, I was going to show you that the area of a circle is pi r squared. But if I do that here, it's going to require some work. It's going to be pretty ugly. Next class, when we go to polar coordinates, I'm going to prove that the area of a circle is pi r squared, and it's going to be very simple to show. So I'd rather do it in polar coordinates than in Cartesian. So just, just remember that, OK? You don't want that to creep up on you somewhere where you're trying to find the area of some re weird region, and you forget that you can do it with a double integral. All right, this is, a, this is a tough problem. We have 15 minutes. I want you, let's see, how many people have books? Yeah, is there like one book per table? I want you to look at uh, number 28 from the book. This is uh, on page 708. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, get, I'll put all the information up here. But in 15 minutes, let's see what you can do about finding the volume of this solid, OK? It's bounded by y squared plus z squared equals 4. x equals 2y. 
x equals 0, z equals 0, and it's in octant 1. There is a solid that is formed by those things. I'll give you a little hint here. All of these are planes. And this is a cylinder. See, last hint, it's a double integral. 15 minutes, I just want you working on this. I, it's, you're not going to turn it in, but I want you to like actively try and get at least the, the picture of the ground, which I'm giving away there, but it's still not going to help you because you don't have any of the values. I'll put up a blank sheet here. Give me a second. Did I see someone raise their hand? I'll be there in just a second. Can we do anything from this mini-exam that is working for me? Uh, can you do anything from the mini-exam? You should be able to do number one and number two. I wouldn't touch three yet. So we can do two? Also? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, you can do one and two from the new mini exam. Two is going to be a head scratcher, though.